So in this video, I'm going to explain to you why the product rule of differentiation works. So the product rule says that if you want to differentiate a product of two functions, so f of x times g of x, then the answer is uh, what you get if you take the derivative of f of x, multiply that by the undifferentiated g of x, and add that to the derivative of g of x multiplied by the undifferentiated version of f of x, and we want to see why this is true. So if we go to the definition of differentiation, and if you don't understand the definition of differentiation, please do watch my earlier video in the calculus playlist on why does differentiation work. If we go to that definition, then if we want to differentiate f of x times g of x, we just put it into the definition. It's going to be the limit as a approaches 0 of our function evaluated at x plus a. So if we just put x plus a into this function, it gives us f of x plus a, g of x plus a. Take away the value of the function at x, which is just f of x times g of x. And then we want to take that change in the y variable and divide it by the change in the x variable, which is a. Now we're aiming to end up with a formula that involves the derivative of f of x and the derivative of g of x. So what we need to try and do is get these definitions of f of x and g of x somehow into this. So remember f prime of x is the limit as a approaches 0 of f of x plus a minus f of x divided by a and similarly for g prime of x here. So what we are aiming to do is get these things within the limit into here somehow, because then if we're taking the limit as a approaches 0 up here, and we have these expressions inside our great big expression here, we know that those bits of the uh, structure that we have here are just going to turn into f prime of x and g prime of x as a approaches 0. So we could rewrite f of x plus a and g of x plus a like so. So let's examine f of x plus a here. So we have now got f of x plus a minus f of x over a. If we multiply that by a, of course, that these two cancel, and we just end up with f of x plus a minus f of x. And then we're adding on the f of x here to cancel that away. And this, of course, then just ends up as f of x plus a. And you might wonder, what is the point of doing this? We've turned something simple into something complicated that just cancels down to this anyway. But this is clever because we've now got this structure here. And we desperately want that up here inside the limit. So if we substitute this up here with this, it's going to help us a lot. Similarly, with g of x plus a, we can do exactly the same thing. We can write it as g of x plus a minus g of x over a, times it by a to cancel the a off, and then add back on g of x to get rid of this g of x. And again, the reason we're doing this is because we desperately want this structure inside the limit. So we're going to substitute for g of x plus a this thing here, because we know that if we get these things inside this limit, then as a approaches zero, they are going to turn into these derivatives here. So if you substitute this in, predictably you end up with an absolute mess. So here is the finished job. So let's just talk through this. So what we've done is we've taken this and put it in place of the f of x plus a. So here it is. And then we have multiplied that by g of x plus a, but we've put this in place of g of x plus a. So here it is. We've then got minus f of x g of x up here, and then the whole thing is still divided by a. So we've multiplied out the brackets now and the expression gets even worse. So let's talk through what we've done here. So we've taken the stuff in this bracket here and multiplied it by the stuff in this bracket here. So let me show that to you. So we've started by multiplying this by this and that gives this term here. So here is this here, here is this here and both of them have an a so that makes the a squared here. We then want to multiply this by this, that gives this term here. Here is this, here's its a, and then g of x is there. We then want to take this and multiply it by this, so that gives this bit over here. So here is this stuff in the bracket, there's the f of x, and there's the a that's multiplied with this. 
Then we want to take this and multiply it with this. That will give f of x times g of x, but that will then cancel with this because we've got a minus f of x, g of x here. So that's the reason that that's not on here. This has cancelled with the uh, plus f of x, g of x that we get from expanding the bracket. And then the whole thing is still divided by a. So the next step is to divide through by a. So remember, a is never going to equal 0. It, we're taking the limit as a approaches 0, but we never want to actually let a equal 0. The whole idea of taking this gradient of a secant line um, means nothing when a is actually equal to 0. So a is never equal to 0, so that means that we can divide through by a. So finally, a little bit of a simplification. We cancel one of the a's from here to take this down to a here. So this term has become this. We cancel the a off here, so this term becomes this here, and we cancel the a off from here uh, with this a, so this term here becomes this term here. So now comes the brilliant bit. So now what we need to do is think about what happens to this expression in the limit as a approaches zero. Well, that is the reason we wanted all of these structures inside the limit, because we know what happens to them in the limit as a approaches zero. They become equal to the derivative. So as a approaches zero, this becomes equal to f prime of x. As a approaches zero, this becomes equal to g prime of x. We'll leave the a there, and we'll think about that in just a moment. This becomes again equal to f prime of x, so we get plus f prime of x times g of x, and this uh, approaches g prime of x as well, so this final term becomes g prime of x f of x. Now this bit is looking very hopeful. This is exactly the product rule of differentiation that we're trying to show. So what about this term? This is the bit that's messing it up at the moment. This isn't part of the product rule. Well, this term is doomed because of the a there. So even though these things are approaching f prime of x and g prime of x, you have to remember there is still an a here. And as a approaches zero, that a is going to get smaller and smaller and smaller, whilst these are just going to approach finite numbers. So this becoming infinitesimal is going to mean that this entire expression becomes infinitesimal because there's nothing that's becoming infinite to cancel that out. These are approaching finite real numbers. This is approaching an infinitesimal. So that means that when you multiply these two finite numbers by an infinitesimal, the whole structure is becoming tinier and tinier and tinier. So this entire bit is just going to go to zero in the limit as a approaches zero. So we can get rid of that term from the expression. So therefore, the answer to this limit, the answer to what the derivative of f of x times g of x is equal to, is it's equal to this bit, f prime of x times g of x, and then I've just rearranged these, plus f of x times g prime of x, and hence we have demonstrated the uh, reason the product rule is true.